Pathfinding is such an interesting concept. There are a large variety of different algorithms that you can use, and many ways to implement pathfinding in your game. Here I have used what's called Breadth First Search, or BFS for short, also called Flood Fill. You can find this style of pathfinding in games like XCOM or Phoenix Point. It can be used elsewhere, but as we will discover later, it's not optimal in many scenarios. The ground lights up in green with all of the possible locations that our Pathfinder can reach from the given character's position. A small white line shows the actual calculated path that we can then take. As they move around, they also become obstacles themselves, blocking and hindering each other's movements. BFS works by exploring a node tree, starting at the root node and exploring the present depth before moving on to the next depth level. That's the technical way to describe it anyway, but it's probably easier to just show you. Here is our node tree, each hexagon represents a node, and the starting origin node is first to be explored and added to the pathfinder. It then finds every neighbouring node to explore next. In this way, it expands out in all directions at once, exploring and adding neighbouring nodes to the list. Each node then remembers where it came from, and which node came before it. This process continues until all tiles have been explored, or we have reached the maximum allowed length. When the user then hovers over a node, we can reconstruct a path by asking that node to remember the node that came before it and trace ourselves all the way back to the origin. The best part of BFS is that it discovers every possibility. If there is a path to a location, we can know for sure that we will find it. But if you are looking for performance and want to use this is real time with lots of different navigating agents at the same time, it will be very expensive. This style of tactical turn-based movement is the perfect application for it. Let's slow down and take a snapshot of our scene. I have not named things exactly the same as I described them earlier. Instead of nodes, the ground is made up of tiles. The green highlighted part that we can actually navigate across is called the frontier. And lastly, in blue we have our characters. Turning on the debugging mode, we can visualize how every tile is pointing to the previous tile. Together they form a long chain of connected tiles, leading all the way back to our character, the root node. Tiles themselves don't really have any functions, they just store data about themselves. They are keepers of their own state. We can see the parent tile here, which is the tile we are pointing to, as well as a reference to any character currently occupying this space. You might have spotted a ladder further up the scene. We can set manual connections using the connected tile reference. More on that later, we can turn the arrows on or off using this boolean. And we also have some public properties for the Pathfinder and mouse interaction script to access our state. Our only method is to change our own color. Each color is actually a mesh. And this switch case switches between them, which perhaps isn't ideal, but it works for now as we only have two colors. The interaction script, simply called interact, uses a raycast to inspect tiles, and it can only ever hit tiles. If occupied, we call on the pathfinder to generate new paths from this tile. Otherwise, if empty, we will attempt to navigate our selected character to that tile instead. Finally, here we have the pathfinder itself. There is a lot to read here, so I will cut away some chaff and focus on the important bits. As soon as a character is selected, we put that character's tile in a queue with a cost of zero. The open set contains all of the tiles that we want to explore. We can read this while loop as, while there are tiles to explore in the open set, we take the next tile from the queue and add it to the frontier. And then for each neighbor, we visit those. And their cost is of course our current cost, plus one. We add those to the open set to be explored next. When we exit this loop, that means the open set has been fully explored, or we reached the maximum length that we were allowed. But we can now highlight the frontier in green and store it for future use. 
We also have the make path method. Let's step through it together. This is the path we are anticipating while hovering our cursor over a tile. We do this in reverse, starting from the destination point that we are hovering over, adding each tile to a list. As long as we have not reached the origin, we keep exploring the current tile's parent until we have found our way back to the character. With all of the tiles now found, we are actually pointing the wrong way, so we reverse the list of tiles and generate something called a path from this list. The path class is really just an array of tiles that we feed to our character. Let's step out of the code for a second and view the scene again. As we press a character, we run the algorithm and find all paths. Then, as we hover over tiles, the make path method is constructing a path. Finally, as we confirm where we want to go, our character starts to move. Let's have a look at how this scene can be constructed and how you would use it if you downloaded it. We will also see how those connected tiles work. Click the drop-down window Tools Grid Generator. We can now start to generate new areas, but first we must attach a prefab to be instantiated. In the prefabs folder we have a tile game object ready for use. Drag it into the window and we can now see our options. We can set a starting position and specify the width and length of our new grid. The tool is non-destructive and we can change the settings. Hit regenerate to change the grid as we go without having to remove the old grid every time. Each tile generated this way has its own coordinates as their name, but the coordinates are not used for any purpose at the time of writing. As you can see, this new grid comes with a tile generator script attached. Our editor tool communicates with and manipulates this generator script. The next option is to create a ladder. Ignore the word ladder here, as I will have changed this to connect tiles before this video is out on YouTube. We can now manually connect two tiles that we would otherwise not be able to traverse between. The Pathfinder works by raycasting, and proximity is how tiles are connected normally. Without the option to manually connect two tiles, we could not create interesting areas. Our third option is to connect a character to the grid. They do this automatically at the start of the scene, but if for some reason they don't, you could make sure by manually connect them with this option. I also want to show the character move data sheet. We can create a new one as a scriptable object. Let's call this one fast character and change both the move speed as well as the maximum range that we can move. Characters in this version don't always move with the same speed. There is a duration for how long it takes to move between two tiles. So the distance between them affects the speed at which a character moves. We only have four prefabs. One of those is the ladder. It comes with two tiles already connected to each other. We just need to line up the bottom and top tile with another grid so that they can find each other dynamically later on via proximity. The tile generator script looks something like this. It will read the tile size directly from the mesh. So as long as you use a flat hexagonal mesh, they will always perfectly generate in a grid. We also have these magic numbers. They are responsible for hexagonal offsets. If you wish to use rectangles instead of hexagons, you would need to change these values. I think you just remove the E.75 and it should work. This nested for loop generates the positions. Even or uneven rows also need to be offset to fit the hexagonal pattern, which is what this offset and even row method does. You can read more about breadth first search on the internet. There are lots of articles and YouTube videos on the subject. Personally, I would suggest Red Blob Games. It has excellent descriptions of different topics and other pathfinding algorithms, not just this BFS, although it is written in Python and not C Sharp. It also has interactions for you to play with. To better understand what's happening, I will leave a link down below. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. You can find this project on my GitHub, linked down below in the description.